Hello everyone. Let's talk a little about things that are really scary. Not about ghosts and other paranormal beings, but about the condition that every person can face. A coma, an absence of reactions, loss of consciousness, in which you seem to freeze between our world and the other side. Having fallen into a coma, some people have been in the state for many years, and doctors still can't make any forecasts. But among the many sad stories, there are those that can be called a real miracle. So we'll talk about them today. Martin Pistorius was born in South Africa in 1975. In January 1988, when the boy was 12 years old, one day he came home from school and complained of a sore throat. It would seem that such a problem is treated with the simplest medications, but Martin never returned to school. His condition disastrously worsened, and doctors could not understand what was happening to the boy. A few days later, he was so exhausted that he almost completely lost control of his body and slept all the time. Soon, he began to quickly lose memory, and a couple of days later, fell into a coma. The cause of the disease was never established. Martin had long been treated for cryptococcal meningitis and cerebral tuberculosis, but everything was useless. After a while, the doctors admitted that Martin completely lost touch with the outside world, and nothing more can be done to help him. He was discharged from the hospital, and the parents were told that they could only look after him and wait for the disease to do its job. Of course, there was a tiny chance that the boy would recover, but the doctors claimed that he would never be able to return to normal life. In a state of coma, people rarely live long, but Martin, contrary to all predictions, kept hanging on to his life. However, was this existence a real life? He spent more than 10 years at home. Everyone thought that he'd lost all contact with the outside world, but Martin claims that he regained consciousness a couple of years after he fell ill. I was completely unresponsive. I was in a virtual coma. I was lost in the land where dragons lie and no one could rescue me, Martin shared. When he was 17 years old, he completely regained his consciousness. Memory returned to him, but the guy still couldn't talk. He felt like a ghost because people seemed to look through him and Martin himself could only watch them. However much I tried to beg and plead, shout and scream, I couldn't make them notice me, Martin wrote later. The stark reality hit me that I was going to spend the rest of my life like that, totally alone. The guy was trapped and his only interlocutor was his own thoughts, thoughts that could not be called joyful. Once Martin even heard his mother in a fit of despair said that it would be better if all this ended right now, no matter how. This was the most terrible moment in his life. The boy was hurt, but he understood that she said it because she considered herself to be a bad mother that can't help her beloved son. The only one who believed in the boy until the very end was his father. Every day, he washed and fed Martin, dressed and even made a massage. Inside, I cried desperately to him. Dad, I'm here. Can't you see? But he didn't notice me. I could only stare, praying my silent desperation would somehow communicate itself, recalls Martin. To train the brain, the boy constantly solved problems in his mind, and one day, everything changed. When Martin was 25, one of the paramedics that worked with him noticed his faint attempts to make it clear that he was present. A meaningful look, a barely perceptible smile, a nod. Martin was urgently sent to a special center for alternative communication at the University of Pretoria, where he passed various tests and proved to be conscious. Learning about the improvements of the son's health, the mother quit her job and for the next two years helped Martin to develop a special computer program with which Martin can now communicate. He chooses words and the laptop speaks for him. Hello, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Martin Pistorius. Having received the opportunity to communicate, the guy was able to finish college and even got a job as a designer in a web company. Long and heavy rehabilitation did its job. A facial expression returned to Martin, the movements of the upper body. In 2008, he met his sister's friend, Joanna. A year later, they got married and lived happily together in the UK. I'm happy with who I am, says Martin. Life can change so quickly. It is important to appreciate what you have at the moment. In 2011, Martin Pistorius' book, Ghost Boy, was published, in which he told his story and shared all the experiences that he'd had while he was locked inside his own body. Martin calls on everyone to treat each other with kindness, respect and sympathy. Never underestimate the power of reason, the importance of love and faith. 
and don't ever stop dreaming. But no matter how marvelous the story of Martin seems, it's not the only one. In 2007, a Polish guy named Jan Grzebski came to his senses after spending 19 years in a coma. Yes, friends, for 19 years. In the 80s, Jan, who was at that time 46 years old, worked as a track man on the railway. But during the work, he was seriously injured by a fastening of the car and was urgently sent to the hospital. Doctors told the relatives the sad news. In addition to the injuries received, Jan suffered from a brain tumor and soon fell into a coma. The prospects were disappointing. Grzebski could not last more than three years. But Jan's wife, Gertruda, was not about to give up. Every day, she not only did all the necessary procedures for her husband, but also constantly talked to him, sharing the latest news. It would seem like quite a meaningless occupation, but Gertruda saw Jan react to her words. She just thought everyone else didn't see it. The man's fingers trembled and his eyes moved under his eyelids, but the doctors asserted that these involuntary convulsive movements meant nothing. But as Jan grew older, the size of the tumor decreased, allowing him to gradually regain consciousness. In the end, everything ended in a completely unexpected way. Mr. Grzebski came to himself on April the 12th, 2007. Doctors couldn't say anything. Turned out that Gertrude was right all this time. At the time when Grzebski fell into a coma, he had four children. Back then, Poland, or rather the then Polish People's Republic, was in a deep economic crisis. The workers constantly organized mass strikes, and in general, life was not easy. Imagine what was Jan's surprise when he discovered that the world around was completely different. And if he fell asleep in the era of communism, then he woke up in a country that had joined the European Union. When I went into a coma, there was only tea and vinegar in the shops, meat was rationed, and huge petrol queues were everywhere. Now I see people on the streets with cell phones, and there were so many goods in the shops. It makes my head spin, Grzebski said in an interview. In addition, when he regained consciousness, Jan suddenly discovered that all his children had grown up long ago and had their own families, and he himself became the happy grandfather of 11 grandchildren. However, according to Grzebski himself, being a grandfather was not news to him, as Gertruda told him all about this, and the man heard every word. Another similar case occurred to a guy named Juan Torres. In 2013, when Juan was only 19, his parents discovered that he was unconscious on the floor of his own bedroom. The boy didn't speak. He couldn't eat or move independently. Doctors told relatives that the young man is in a vegetative state and it was possible he could stay like this for the rest of his life. It was completely unclear why Juan suddenly disconnected from the world. The night before, nothing strange had happened to him and he didn't feel unwell. According to the parents, he just came home from work, ate a salad and went to bed. But something happened that night and in the morning, the mother found Juan unconscious. It's been two whole years before some changes had taken place in his condition. One day on Thanksgiving Day, Family members took the young man to the backyard to have some fresh air. Juan's favorite dogs were playing around, and suddenly his father made a strange decision. He put a dog's whistle on his son's lips, and suddenly Juan whistled. It was obvious this wasn't a simple reflex, and it soon became clear that the guy began to recover. Soon after the unexpected experiment, Juan began to move his lips, then whisper, and after all, he could speak on a par with others, having fully recovered his voice. Gradually, other cool things returned too, like the ability to draw, play the piano, or play with the dogs. Juan even learns to walk again, and although this isn't easy, he's succeeding. Surprisingly, like the other heroes of our video, the guy claims to have memorized all that has happened in those two years. For example, asking doctors to move his arm or watching a tennis ball. And it's not just words. Using special tests, scientists have confirmed Juan did really see, hear, and understand everything that was happening. He also told he was very upset about this. He couldn't communicate with his family and wasn't able to do what the doctors asked him to do. It was really sad. In the end, Juan Torres was able to overcome his unknown disease, return to school, and even engaged in sports, including wheelchair rugby. The guy spends his free hours on a computer, writing electronic music, and the doctors, well, they still can't find any explanation for what happened to Juan. Perhaps youth and physical strength helped him to recover, but only these factors are not enough. 
because so few people come to their senses and live a full life having been on the edge. Maybe it's just a miracle. Guys, it's time to recharge your brain. Visit the channel Brain Time. There you'll find a lot of interesting and useful facts, lots of positive energy and tons of useful information. Subscribe right now. We promise it's going to be really exciting. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks and we'll be right back to you as fast as we can.